Welcome to the state of AI. There is so much to unpack about AI, where we are, where we're headed, and I've got two of the top Salesforce AI experts here with me, so let's kick it off. I am joined by Jayesh Govindarajan, a, a SVP of AI and Machine Learning here at Salesforce, and Silvio Savarese, thank you for joining us, EVP and Chief Scientist. Welcome to TDX. It's a pleasure to be here. Pleasure How's it going so far? Amazing, amazing. Yeah, Exciting. excellent. <laughs> let's talk about introducing yourselves to our viewers a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about specifically what you do. Silvio, I'm going to start with okay. you as Chief Scientist. Yes, okay, so I'm, uh, to your point, I'm a Chief Scientist uh, running the AI research organization. Uh, I oversee the major um, investments for uh, research on AI, uh, and in particular, we really strive for bringing innovations and uh, transform the technology posture of uh, Salesforce. That's kind of a kind of a big deal. <laughs> Some fun stuff you get to work on. Jayesh, what about you? What's your? Uh, my name is Jayesh. I lead our Salesforce AI and machine learning uh, organization. Uh, I lead a team of amazing engineers, data scientists, uh, analysts, and we're responsible for building Salesforce's AI platform, co-pilots, uh, as well as Salesforce AI applications that you see all around TDX. So this is kind of like a big party for you guys, it right? Like all the stuff bit, you've yes. been working on is now really coming out and people are getting their hands on it. Now, Silvio, I want to start with you. A year ago at TDX, generative AI was a brand new thing to most of us. Right. And a lot has happened since then. Can you kind of take us a little bit through that journey about what's different now versus then, kind of what's happened in the last year? Yeah, well, let, let me start from the beginning. Uh, so when ChatGPT uh, was proposed, was announced, uh, we were not unprepared. Uh, we were working on uh, generative AI technology for quite some time, uh, and we were actually building our own in-house LLMs uh, for quite some time as well. Uh, and one example was uh, CodeGen, which was uh, one of the first uh, LLM for uh, code generation using a natural language. Uh, this was a very exciting time. We put a lot of investments on that. And now, actually, the exciting thing is that this uh, 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 LLM has been used, has been brought to productions, and it's been powering a number of features, a number of products that are currently used. And actually, TDX has been one of the, uh, uh, the venues for uh, uh, showcasing all these venues, all these features to the, to the public. And this is actually as a result of a uh, very uh, long and uh, intense work with the platform, with the engineering team, with Jayesh. This has been uh, an amazing collaboration uh, that we carry out. Well, speaking Absolutely. of that amazing cooperation, I love Jayesh. Can you talk a little bit about how you're turning this amazing research that Silvio and his team are doing and incorporating that into the product? How does that like productization happening? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, typically, uh, research teams are sort of twice removed from the customers, if you will. And one of the things that Silvio and I have sort of done quite differently than many other companies is we bring, we engage with research early, we engage with them often and we always engage with them in context of a customer problem. Uh, one example of this is an engagement that Silvio and I personally drove with Gucci, uh, one of our marquee customers in the early days of generative AI when this technology was just very nascent. This was about a year, year and a half ago, if I remember. Uh, and, uh, and that journey has informed a lot of our um, definition of products, what stack needs to be built, uh, what models will work in production, um, and having that research muscle, working really close with product, working really close with engineering, uh, in solving sort of a key customer problem and using that as the crucible for innovation is sort of something that we've, uh, both Sylvia and I have uh, benefited a lot from. So I'd say um, engage early, engage often in context of real customer problems. Well, that's kind of a theme I keep hearing too, even from our product managers who are on about really kind of continuing to get that direct connection to the people who are using the products, understanding what they're using it for, what they want, and also getting that feedback, right? So that you can kind of iterate and continue working. And we really hope to find you know, many other Gucci stories coming Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have a whole yeah. pipeline that yeah. we work on together with, absolutely. Well, now that you've done it once, we can, we can keep, yeah. the, keep yes. it going, right? right? So um, let's talk a little bit about our enterprise AI stack. You know, how has the last year with generative AI, prompt templates, co-pilots, really influenced the architecture, right? How, for us and for our customers. Silvio, you want to start there? Yeah, sure. So, well, let me let me actually um, tell you a little bit about how we foresee uh, the evolution of the, some of the current capabilities. So we have uh, uh, working on uh, this amazing uh, AI assistance, which is Copilot, which was actually announced uh, and released on TDX. Uh, but now we are really thinking about what's next, right? what's the next generation. And uh, what we want to do is to really build uh, a, a, a valuable and effective AI assistance 
can help uh, users and customers and developers to perform a lot of exciting tasks. So for, for instance, we are looking uh, uh, to build a system that can be more proactive, not just reactive, uh, can be multimodal, can be actually process uh, 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 inputs that goes beyond text, but also can include speech, can include images, videos, uh, other type of sensory modalities. Uh, also can be essentially uh, as a memory, so remember what uh, has done before. So these are very important feature uh, aspects that we are planning to build in the next generation of copilots. And of course this requires some major uh, upgrades of the architecture, architecture and the platform yeah. that, uh, Which that you're working has been. on. Right. Which is exactly yeah. something we work very closely <laughs> yeah. with the research team on and our customers on. And if you look at the enterprise AI stack that we've stood up just the last one year, uh, it's sort of built on the backs of ensuring that we bring in customers' data in a secure, trusted manner to this new world of generative AI. Uh, a lot of work that we have done to bring in that data context is super important. Uh, being able to bring the data and context along with actions to co-pilots is again super important. So the, the new stack that has emerged is built on a predictive stack which uh, serves a billion predictions but has the generative AI capabilities to bring in large language models to be able to orchestrate actions with co-pilots and to be able to bring in the data which is so needed for bringing the context in so that the prompts work really well in context of a customer. And that's, I mean, I, we kind of see that come to life with the idea of like structured and unstructured data and being able to feed into data cloud. That's, that's excellent. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, let's continue on that topic. So let's actually talk a little bit about how this changes you know, the development life cycle itself, right? You, know, you talked about Copilot, you talked about prompt templates. How does it change who's involved with how apps are developed? Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, if you unpack the anatomy of a Gen AI application, it looks, feels, is built very differently yeah. as compared to a typical three-tier application that developers are used to, which has always been, uh, this is my database, this is my middle tier, this is how I expose my APIs, and then this is how I wrap that into a user interface, which has buttons and drop-downs and menus and lists. Um, all of that's changed now. Now you're able to do uh, what you were able to do with clicks, uh, actions and drop downs you're able to do with a simple instruction to an assistant. Uh, think of it as having a uh, you know, high quality intern for every job. Uh, the way you interact with them is going to be considerably different uh, and the stack that's needed to be able to produce valuable output, be able to orchestrate actions on your behalf is very different. So from a developer's perspective, where they used to take these APIs and thread them together into a static piece of code that executes uh, in a user interface or, 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 or a lightning web component in our world has now changed into uh, a set of primitive APIs that can be dynamically brought together based on the instruction that an end user will give or provide on a, on a co-pilot. So it's an entirely different paradigm for building uh, you know, co-pilot applications, entirely different paradigm to test them because as you know, uh, these systems are non-deterministic. A typical lightning web component or UI uh, you know, is static, but it's also deterministic. Uh, being able to test it requires a different mindset, uh, having a deep notion of a job to be done, having data sets to evaluate. So it is a different paradigm, and a lot of what we're talking about at TDX this year is sort of just how to build, test, and deploy this with trust and at scale. No. Silvio? Yeah, no, I think it's a total yeah. well, agree points. And we yeah. talked about that a little bit more just in the code AMA just a few segments ago was really talking about how this is going to change the way we test as developers, right? And we had you know, Mo and Aditya really talking about how to do that, kinds of questions to ask, how many questions to ask, and really kind of taking that next level. So let's look a little bit forward. We only have less than a minute left. Okay. So was, let's <laughs> talk about the future in 30 seconds. Right. Um, let's talk about you know, future. Where is this all going? What are we going to be talking about TDX next year? Silvio? Yeah, well, first of all, let me add a, a couple of points about the importance of those tools we are building for developer activity. I think it's important to keep in mind that this is a, a revolution for how developers, developers can, can uh, uh, build code. Uh, we have to think about the way that actually they can change their, their, their job, and think about AI can really help addressing some of the menial repetitive tasks. So they have to really think about what they are planning to do, uh, how we can delegate, uh, some of those tasks to AI such that their work can be much more proactive. So with, but this is not just for developers, it's, it's across all different type of aspects of uh, sales, service, commerce, marketing, it's uh, across the board. So how to redefine our role such that uh, we can actually use AI to best um, uh, help us in performing those tasks. So what, what, is, uh, what I see 
is high the game? Well, first of all, trust. We make sure that whatever we're deploying is done in a way that uh, customer and users are uh, using safe AI tools. Uh, it's like on you know, next generation of co-pilots. I think this is going to be the big, the big uh, transformation. I love that. Thank you both so much for joining me. This is yeah. a really fascinating discussion. We have plenty more to talk about. I look forward <laughs> to seeing you next year. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, before then. But thank you so much, Shaya. Thank, thank you. you so much, thank Silvio. you for having us. And if you want to learn a little bit more about what we just talked about, check out Silvio's great article on artificial and general intelligence. The link is sfdc.co slash what is AI.